In this video, I will be talking about the KM529 LCD controller. This is the same controller that is found on all of the current Big Cat electric bicycles. With me today, I have the Big Cat Mini Cat XL500. I'm just going to go through and set this up. This top one here is the power button. This two here are control settings. And to turn on the light, you just hold on the plus sign for about two to three seconds. And just a quick walkthrough here. These uh, top numbers here will be your speed, that's your distance, this is your battery life, this is your assist level, which it's currently set to the lowest one, that's the highest. The headlight will indicate whether the light is on, and you can see that down here. And you can also see your assist level right there. It'll as I just mentioned will indicate on the right hand side so we're gonna go through the different settings of this LCD screen according to the user guide here it has battery indicator speed display which will include the real-time speed average speed and max speed your trip distance and total distance your pedal assist level your headlight error code indicator and there are other parameter settings that you can access as well with this LCD controller. So for starters, we're going to get into the, um, the setup, which is something that you have to do when you initially set up this bicycle. And that's by holding the plus and the minus here. You hold them down for about three seconds. And once you access this menu here, you have to enter your wheel size. And the Mini Cat XL is a 20 inch wheel, so it's already set up for 20 inches. If you had a Long Beach Cruiser or a Fat Cat XL, you would go up to a 26 inch wheel. Or if you had a fixed gear or a road bike, it's 700C, so on and so forth. So we're gonna set that to 20 inches. And to save that setting, you'll press the power button again, and it'll go on to the next one. And the next one here would be your top speed. Just keep in mind that 40 is kilometers. Uh, and it's the highest speed, so if you want to reach the top speed on this bike, you would set it to 240. Going to the next one, BL is backlight, and that changes the brightness of the LCD screen here. Keeping it on 3 is probably a good choice, uh, especially if you do a lot of nighttime riding. However, just keep in mind, the brighter the screen, the more energy you will take from the battery. And that's pretty much it for the setup process. Once you've selected everything that you want for your bike or for your riding style, you just have to hold the power button again for about three seconds. And it'll go back to the main menu. And then you're all set up. So there are some other features um, for this LCD controller. Uh, we'll just go through a few of them real quick. So the power is just holding it down. It'll turn on. Initially, when it turns on, it won't have the backlight. So you have to hold the plus sign for two to three seconds, and that will turn on both the backlight and the headlight. Now, there's no way to turn on just one of them. When you turn on the backlight, you're turning on the headlight as well. And there's a walking mode, which you hold down for about three seconds, the minus sign. And what that does is if you're walking uphill and you don't want to ride your bike uphill, or you don't want to walk the bike without any assistance, the walking mode will help push the bike for you as long as you're holding this plus, this minus sign for about three seconds until you release it, the motor will be engaged. And it does go at an average speed of about three to four miles, I believe. So it's really good for uphill if you're kind of tired and you want to walk up the hill, you don't want to ride the bike if it's very steep, you just hold that uh, minus sign and it will go up the hill. It will help you. It will give you assistance and it's a really great feature to have. The next is the speed and you get your current speed, your average speed, and your max speed. And the way you toggle through that is by holding the power and the plus. And now it is showing your average speed, your max speed. And when there's neither one of those two, it's showing your live speed. So as far as the uh, battery indicator goes, what you'll notice when you're riding is if you're using the throttle and you're on the highest le level of assist, and you're going up a hill or anything that is really putting stress on the motor, you're going to notice that the battery indicator is going to start going down. And once you come back to a normal level where you're not putting a lot of stress on the motor, it's going to come back up. That's just kind of an indication of if you continue to use the bike in this certain way, this is what you can expect your battery level to be at. Um, 
So that's one thing to keep in mind. It doesn't mean that your battery is completely low if you're going up a hill or you're using the highest level pedal assist. It would eventually go back up once you stop. Uh, but that's just kind of an indication of how much energy or current you're using and it could really drain your battery. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you don't really need a lot of power, I would recommend staying in a lower pedal assist level or not using the throttle too much because that's one way that you can really drain the battery and if you're really trying to conserve energy and get the most out of the battery it's better to stay in a lower assist level if you're just trying to have fun and you really need to really need the assistance you really need to get up some hills then go ahead and bump up the pedal assist level